Rub up your engines. Rusty Shackelford says, Scotty, you claim you never do sponsored videos. Don't tons of companies hit you up for it? Well, yeah, they do. Now, years ago, I did a handful of sponsored videos. And the funny thing is, most of them were products that I was already using, like AutoZone. There's one two blocks on the street here I go to all the time. It's that I'm not comfortable doing it. Let's take example of the AutoZone one. I wasn't dealing with AutoZone, I was dealing with our advertising company. So I couldn't talk to them and the advertising company was like a go-between and they'd say, oh, they like this, they don't like that. And, you know, I just uh, didn't like the experience. Plus, when it comes to advertising, in the modern world, just about anything goes. Look at that new Chevy ad that they got out claiming that Chevys were more reliable than Hondas and Toyotas, which is total nonsense. Nonsense. If you ask any mechanic who's honest, they'll tell you, no, that's a complete barefaced lie. But an advertising company got paid to make it. People got paid to be in it, and they claimed it was some survey. Who knows what the survey was? Who they even asked? Maybe they only asked gym employees. I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it doesn't tend towards too much honesty when people get paid cash to say something is great. Now, what I do today is I changed a while back, and I just have a form letter on my computer. And when companies get a hold of me, I send it back to them and say, look, I don't do sponsored videos. But if you have certain products, send me the products. I will gladly try them out. I'm an open-ended guy. I like trying things out, see if they're good, see if they're bad. If you see my garage, it's going to full to the roof now with things. Well, most of that stuff is stuff people have sent me and I'm trying out. If they're any good, hey, I'll use them in a video. If they're excellent, I certainly will use them in a video and talk about them. But it's not really fair to be paid to say that something is great. I know a lot of YouTubers do a lot of advertising. Well, I see that it's not something that I want to do because I still run my business. I found that if you don't run a business and you're talking about it, in my case, car repair, you're soon going to be obsolete. You're not going to know what breaks, how to fix it, what ones are good, which ones are bad. And since I have the business, I don't have to depend on my YouTube income to live on. That's just like gravy money. If I had quit my business and just did YouTube, that would be my only source of income. And when people have only one source of income, generally they'll do just about anything. Like I used to do a car talk on CBS television. Television stations will advertise just about anything because that's their only source of income is advertising. So they'll run just about anything. There's guidelines, FCC guidelines, and yeah, they've got to meet them, but a lot of times they get pretty close and they're skirting issues where they'll have a program and it won't say on the bottom that these are all paid advertisements where the whole half hour is bought and paid for. And so I don't want to get involved in any of that stuff. I just like helping out millions of people and I'm happy with the shotgun advertising that Google does on the YouTube ads. Anybody can advertise on my thing. The advertisements you see before my videos can come from absolutely anywhere. You know, they're just regular advertisements. I don't have anything to do with them. I don't pick them. I don't put them on. They're just there. And that's a fairer thing because then they're not saying, oh, Scotty, we paid you $100,000 last year to say Chrysler's are great cars. What's happening here? You're saying they're bad cars. Well, I can just tell the truth the way I'm set up, and I'm going to keep it that way. The guy says, Scotty, I got no two Pontiac Sunfire. Traction control light, the ABS, and the service engine lights are all on. What could be wrong? Modern cars often have software that when your check engine light comes on, the computer automatically turns off the traction control and the ABS system. So a lot of times, you have one problem that turns all three lights on. So you want to pray it's that. Get the engine scan. It only has one code, the check engine light. Could be something as dumb as it needs a spark plug wire or it needs a gas cap because it's leaking and the EVEP system tripped the code. A lot of times that'll trip all three. So get it scanned, pray that fixes them all. Now if it doesn't, it's a relatively old car and not that well made of a car. You'll have a whole bunch of problems. But pray it's only one and then that tripped all the others. A lot of cars are made that way and they will do that. Pat Lamou says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2017 Audi SUV? They look nice and they're great for driving around. But they're endless money pits as they age and you'll lose your money fast as you can say go <laughs> they depreciate like mad if you really truly want to get one of those things lease it. best thing to do lease it. 
You'll get it out of your system. You'll have fun, you drive it around, and when the lease is up, turn it in. Because you look at what they cost, and say you drove one for three or four years, and then it started to fall apart, you'd see, oh man, it's only worth 30% of what I paid for it. Might as well just lease it and get it out of your system if you want to have one. They are fun to drive, they look nice and stuff, but they're endless money pits as they age. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.